and you are not aware of it. Right? You are doing an action on the basis of your decision and you don't feel yourself responsible. You keep thinking that somebody else is responsible. Is that what is happening? You are taking the decision because something is taking place here, right? And you are acting on the basis of this decision, right? And you are not aware of it. And you think somebody else is responsible for it. Is that correct or not correct? Are you responsible for your action? Yes. Ah, 100%. Very good. <laughs> so we have to take that 100% responsibility. We are not taking that 100% responsibility. We keep, keep giving, you know, explanations. I did this because of this, you know, this boy keeps troubling me, you know, I had to bash him up, you know. <laughs> You know, this wife, you know, she keeps nagging all the time. You have to shout at him. So all this explanation you keep giving without taking the responsibility. Slowly you will see that you are responsible for what is going on in you. In terms of your desire, in terms of your thought, in terms of your selection. So all this put together, which we are calling imagination, is going on in you and you are responsible for it or somebody else is responsible for it. What do you think? You are here or taken off? <laughs> <laughs> he is saying that that one and two you have kept back end. Right? So his imagination is going for that one and two. <laughs> and this is interesting, you know. <laughs> now just imagine, I have written something for three, four and five and I am trying to explain it and his mind is not here, but I write one and two. And when I will write one and two, you know, then he will think of three, four, five. <laughs> so just imagine, you know, when we have to do this sharing with others, one has to be aware of all these possibilities. And I purposely put that two one and two there. Because that is going to be the next issue after we discuss three, four, five, you know. So that has already come into your mind, you know, that oh, this one and two must be something there, you know. And you have not been thinking of it before. Before you are not even aware of three, four, five. Only when something was coming out of this, okay, you are becoming aware. In fact, you will see, if you look at your state of awareness, you are certainly not aware of this one and two. Something is happening in three and four and five, you are not aware of it. Something is, you know, coming out as your behavior, right, with your, let's say, with your wife. You are not even aware of that. That behavior is hurting for the wife, right? You are not aware of it, right? And it goes on and, you know, keeps on accumulating the reaction in the wife. Only when she starts throwing utensils, <laughs> then you realize that something has gone wrong. <laughs> that is the level of your awareness. <laughs> is that the case? Yes. yes. <laughs> And it happens with the wife, with the children, with the, you know, friends, everywhere it is happening. So if we now become aware, <coughs> we'll be aware of this, okay? And we'll slowly start looking to this one and two also. Right? They will also become relevant for me. 
So I will be aware of this, then I will be aware of this, then I will be aware of the behaviors, then I will be aware of the consequence of the behavior. Right? Whether it is ensuring mutual happiness in me and my wife or my friend or not, all that I will be aware of. <coughs> Today you are not aware of these consequences even. Only when they pile up, right? And such great occasions take place. No? That you suddenly become aware of it. When your child says, I'm not going to school anymore, then you realize something has gone wrong. Or he, you know, he starts kind of disobeying you or shouting at you. All this, when all this happens, such sharp reactions take place, then you realize that something has gone wrong. So let's look at this. Is this imagination going on in each one of us? Number one. Number two, if the imagination is going on in you, are you aware of what is going on? What is the content of desire, thought, expectation? Right? How it is shifting from one to the other? You had one imagination, then it is shifted to the other, then it is shifted to the other, right? So it is going from one to the other to the other, you know. Can you follow it up? Can you see what is the connection between one and the other? So now if you start paying attention, you can be very, you know, aware of it. So I keep telling people that for five minutes, just start observing yourself. Okay. And look at this, you know, from one desire to other desire to third desire you have shifted, right? From one thought to the other thought, you know. So just try to make a trace of it. Okay, then put the connection, how it went from one to the other and so on. Try doing it for five minutes and you would realize what is your state of being. If I have to draw that image which will be formed after doing this, it will look something like this, no? So after some time it is like this. <laughs> this is your self-image. <laughs> Look at yourself and see. <laughs> Jumping from one imagination to another imagination, right? And then the connectivity of between them. After some time you will not be able to trace where you started from. What is it? This is a appropriate diagram. <laughs> or your state of mind, not very appropriate. <clears throat> what we are trying to do all these days okay, is that if you have the right understanding and right feeling, you, know, <coughs> you understand the harmony in human being, in family, society, nature and so on, right? This diagram would look like this. Like this. So it will be a well defined network. Right? For example, basic human desire is for happiness and prosperity. For happiness and prosperity, you have to ensure harmony in human individual, harmony in family, harmony in society, harmony in nature and history. Then in order to ensure harmony in human beings, right, you have to do certain things. So this will become your canvas if you have the right understanding and right feeling. If you don't have the clarity, this is where you are. So do this, you know, homework. Try to look into yourself. Look at the imagination that is taking place in you. Then see how it is shifting to another imagination, at another imagination. Right? 
then also find out whether you are doing it consciously <coughs> or it is just for, you know taking place unconsciously or you being unaware of it. Right? So if you do that, lot of idea about your own self you will be able to feel. Right? So that is one thing which has to be done. The second important thing to do is that if these things are taking place in you, find out what is the source, what is the motivation, where do they all come from? They have been just piling up in you, okay? but where do they come from, what is the source? So if you try to look at that, there are three possible sources. Three possible sources. The most common one is the existing preconditioning in the society. So the preconditioning in the society they are being dumped into you, okay, one after the other. For example, if there is a preconditioning that you have to become the richest man on the earth, or if there is a preconditioning that you have to come first in the class, okay. now this preconditioning is dumped into you by your parents, by your teacher, by your peers, right? by the society and you are not even aware of it. So what happens? After some time, you have a desire to come first in the class and you don't even know where it has come from and you are governed by this desire to become first in the class. You have not asked yourself whether this desire is naturally acceptable to me not naturally acceptable to me. For example, if I ask you, what is natural for you? To come first in the class or to understand what is being taught? To understand what is being taught. Right? And you can see, to understand what is being taught is possible for everyone. To come first in the class is not possible for everyone. If there is 60 people in the class, only one can come first. But everyone can understand. Right? <coughs> now, we are not even looking at this, you know. We make them as our desire, right? To become first in the class because it is dumped into us through the precondition. And now it starts governing our thinking, right? Our imagination. It govern, starts governing our action, our behavior and work, right? And therefore it also governs our happiness and unhappiness. So now you have created a havoc for yourself. By just imagining, you know, that you have to come first in the class and there are only one person can come first in the class out of the sixty people. So what will happen? You will be unhappy throughout the year because you are fighting with all the sixty-nine people. <laughs> At the end of the session, okay, either you come first in the class or you don't come first in the class. If you come first in the class, you have an excitement for some time. Then again the same unhappiness will start for the next year. Right? If you don't come first in the class, this unhappiness continues anyway. Right? <laughs> With one right in a wrong reconditioning, you are suffering for years and years. So this is one major source. Right? <coughs> Becoming richest man on the earth. What is your natural acceptance? To become natural richest man on the earth or to ensure prosperity? Ensure prosperity. <laughs> Now, if you try to become the richest man on the earth, you have created seven crore enemies, right? Seven hundred crore enemies. 
So all these people are now against you. And they just they don't even know about it. Now you are putting your life into hell. But it is just been dumped into you through the preconditioning which are existing in the society. What do you think? Is this the major source of your desire or, or not? In fact, many of the activities you are doing, now if you look back, right, you have no justification for it. You are doing it simply because it has been dumped into you, right, through the preconditionings existing in the society. Like I remember, you know, once I went to Te, Bombay, we had a similar workshop. And it was conducted, it was to be conducted in one of the islands. Bombay has a lot of islands. So we had to go by a ferry. So when I got into the ferry, I saw that everybody is there, you know, they are wearing torn clothes. clothes. So I asked my host, what has happened to Bombay? Why it has become so Fatehal? Fatehal means, why everybody is wearing torn clothes? <laughs> so she looked at it, he said, oh, you don't know, this is fashion. <laughs> <laughs> so at one time, it had become a fashion, that the trouser you are wearing, you know, it is torn at the bottom. You remember that? I don't know whether it came to Bhutan or not, but India it was there. <laughs> yeah, this was 2003. <laughs> So, I said, it is very surprising. If they have to wear a torn cloth, why get it stitched? <laughs> <laughs> if they are wearing a stitched cloth, why wear it? Right? Just imagine, you know, you are getting a, you know, a you know, cloth stitched and then you are you know, tearing it and wearing it. Right? Just imagine. So much of effect, of effect of preconditioning. What is the logic of doing it? No logic, just the fashion. And what this fashion people are doing is what we saw in the morning, right? The story of stuff. So they change the fashion because they want you to consume more. With sense of responsibility or with no sense of responsibility? With no sense of responsibility. So therefore they keep changing fashion. They change the fashion and they dump it in you. That if you are still wearing flat heels, right? You are backward. Right? You must wear sharp heels, sandals, right? And if you are wearing sharp heels, sandals, after six months, okay, again they will switch to the flat heels and then make you feel that you are backward. <laughs> See that, you know, to have the sharp heels, sandals in this you know, mountain area, it's extremely difficult to walk, you know, walk. I mean, it's difficult to walk in this mountain area, even with the flat shoes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like doing circus. <laughs> but we are doing it, you know. We are doing it out of this precondition. And we are paying for it. They are paying good amount, you know, for wearing sandals which are very, you know, sharp <coughs> heels, you know, and which are very inconvenient to walk. <laughs> but you know, I think it's either in Paro. Paro. One lady was saying, I think it was in Paro, uh, after this three day workshop, in the evaluation session, she said, one of my achievements of this workshop is that I am wearing this flat heel sandal, <laughs> which has been always very comfortable for me. In simple it was, you know, and, but I was wearing that, fly, you know, high heel, you know, sharp, and it was so much difficult to manage. <laughs> but then, this preconditioning can make you do it, you know. You have been doing many physical things, <laughs> like this. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll just take you a few examples. You must it. So this is one major part which decides your desire, thoughts, expectations, right? This preconditioning. And it is dumped into you from outside. Like that movie you saw in the afternoon. It says that today we are exposed to 3,000 or 5,000 advertisements 3, every day. Right? <coughs> Which our ancestors would not have seen throughout their life. <laughs> now you can see how much of preconditioning is dumped into you. And of course by your parents, by the teachers, by the peers, by the society. Right? All it is being dumped. And you have become a bundle of confusion here. Right? <laughs> and this is the result of it. Right? And this is all there and you are not able to sort it out. Dhaga jata na yes. And you don't know how to sort it out. Which entropy can, you know, try to solve it. So this is one major source. The other major source of your desire, thought and expectation is the sensation. This is second major source. Suppose you are walking by the road, you know, and a very shining car passes by. It's very shining, you know, good looking car passes by and you get dragged by it. Isn't it? The car has gone on through the road. It is not more there, no more there in the road, but it is there in your mind now. <laughs> you want that car. So this has become a source of your desire. Now you want a car. Okay. So sensation is another major source. Okay. So most of these advertisement people, right, they either try you to hook up to some sensation right, or hook up to some precondition. So if you read the you know, advertisement and try to analyze it, it either has to do with some preconditioning or it has to do with some sensation. It has to hardly do anything with the product. Most of these advertisements, are they talking about the product or they are talking about some preconditioning or some sensation right, which has no direct relationship to the product, to the quality of the product. For example, this Coca-Cola says, Jindagi ho to aise. Kaisi nahi bata pe kuch. Life must be like this. Like what? They are not saying that. Yeah. Most of the references are like this. If you start reading the content and try to understand what it is talking about the product, you will be able to see it is hardly talking anything about it. This uh, Reliance has an advertisement, the Reliance phone. Right? It says, Karlo Dunya Mutti Me. That is, hold this whole world in your grip. How? By buying a phone. <laughs> now what is happening? You already have this, you know, preconditioning in your mind that you want to control the world, you know, want to put the world in your grip. So it is exciting that preconditioning, and then asking you to buy a cell phone to do this controlling of the whole world. Right? putting the whole world in your grip. <laughs> and if you look at these people who are making this telephone, the Reliance people, right? 
two brothers are not able to live together <laughs> in a mutually fulfilling manner. They have been fighting with each other for years, no? And there is a lot of discussion about it in this newspaper. They are not able to live together, two brothers, and they are asking you to keep the whole world in their grip. <laughs> Unfortunately, all these three conditions works on us miraculously. Yes, because we don't have this capacity to investigate, analyze, you know, and we don't have the right understanding. If we have the right understanding, okay, we can see through these advertisements. And if we can see through these advertisements, they will not have any effect on us. Another example, you know. This hatch, now it has become Vodafone. Yeah. Mm. It is a symbol of the dog, right? Yes. Mm. There are three captions, three scenes that you use. And the caption is, wherever you go, our network follows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first is, you are going for a walk, in the morning walk, right? To the park, and this dog is following you. The second is, you are taking bath <laughs> in the bathroom. And this dog is creeping through the bathtub. <laughs> the third is, you are meditating and this dog is staring at you. And the caption is, wherever you go, the network, our network follows. You get very impressed and buy a Vodafone. When I look at it, I want to make sure that I don't want a Vodafone, right? Because these are the three places I would not like to get disturbed. <laughs> <laughs> so this reconditioning, this advertisement has so much of effect on us because we don't have the capacity to analyze, to investigate, to explore, right? And if you don't have this capacity, <coughs> we will anyway live like animals. You know. In the many direction and they start moving in that direction. So, if we have to live like human beings, then we have to have this capacity to investigate, to analyze, to explore. And it is also better that if we have done all this, you know, well in advance, so I know what is my need, what is not my need. So if there, I have to, you know, if the child is crying and the phone is ringing, I know the priority, right? Whether to pay attention to the child first or to the telephone. <laughs> so, these preconditionings are not really making us, you know, <coughs> It is our lack of understanding because of which all this is being dumped into us and we are just taking lying low. They become part of us and they start governing us. If we are critical, if we are analytical, if we are, you know, exploring into each of these things, every time it comes into me, right, then I will be able to decide whether to permit this to come inside me or not allow it to come inside. And that is the third possibility. Right? So these are the two possibilities. The third possibility is that I have verified things on my own, right, through my self-exploration and I accept it because it is naturally acceptable to me. So Self-verification through natural acceptance. So these are the three roots. One is the preconditioning, second is the sensation, third possibility is the self-verification through natural acceptance. And that is what we have started doing, right, since yesterday. Now you can see, you look into all this which is there in you, 
these collections of desire, thought and expectation and see how many of them are coming from preconditioning, how many of them are coming from preparation, how many of them are coming through your natural acceptance. That is one thing. 